All right, good morning. I am uh, Aaron Heiser of Makers Leather Supply, and um, we're putting together a video this morning on um, a new template that we've put out. Uh, it actually just went out in the mystery box a couple of days ago, and this video should have been done before today. Um, but we've been really busy putting the new website together. So, um, we uh, Field Notes came out with a new sized book, and to me, this is the perfect size book. I should have got one of the other books and set over here too. I'm sorry. Here's one. All right. So previously the standard field notes, standard size field notes book is this big, it has 48 pages in it. And I believe it's like five and a half by three and a half, five and a half, three and a half. Yes. Five and a half by three and a half. It's a great little book to put in your pocket, whatever. But um, me personally, if I'm standing up and writing stuff, I don't like little books. I want a little bit bigger book, but I still need it to be compact because nobody wants to carry a giant book. Anyway, Field Notes came out with this book. So in comparison, there you go. Um, it also has a lot more paper in it. It's like 70-something pages. Um, anyway, uh, this book measures four and a quarter by six and a half uh, when closed. Anyway, um, Field Notes came out with this book. I think it's the perfect size. So we made the template for it and we started carrying these books. They come in a two pack for $14.95. Um, and uh, we started making a, uh, a template for a book cover for it. Um, I have a finished one here, but I just was not prepared apparently. So this is my book that I made from the template when I was uh, designing the template. Um, get a receipt out of there. And there it is. Uh, this is going to be, this is the template set that we came out with. Um, really nice cover for it and everything. And then on the inside, there's two card, uh, card slots for standard size, um, like uh, an ID or a credit card or whatever. And then that bottom one is a little bit more narrow. And it is going to be for um, for business cards. Uh, so yeah, so we made the template set. Uh, we sent it out in the mystery box. This is what it looks like. There's the main back back piece right there. Uh, it says on it uh, back piece cut one from six to seven ounce. Uh, it's a bigger book cover, so I wanted it to have a little bit heavier of a cover. Um, and then here's the little card pocket. It's got the stitch lines marked on it right here. And then here's just the, the little inside wings that you put the book, the, the, the cover to the book behind. Um, you would cut two of these. Each of these is cut from like two to three ounce. I will say this, the card slots and stuff have a very, very narrow tolerance to them. If you use a thicker leather, you're going to have to adjust your stitch lines a little bit or you're not going to be able to get a card in there. Um, when we sent out the mystery box this month, it also had a piece of six to seven ounce leather, approximately this size. Uh, it's a Wicked Craig tooling leather is what it was, um, about yay big. And then also, once again, not prepared, I'm sorry. I thought I had a piece of it over here, but that was wrong. Um, let me grab some something. And then it had a strip of leather in it about yay long. Uh, this is a new leather that we just started carrying. Um, we're not going to have it forever. We've got pretty limited amounts of it. I hope to get it on the website today. We have it in four or five different colors of brown. Um, this is two ounce, uh, like a calf skin. It is, um, it's chrome tan, not veg tan. It is finished and it is a little bit shiny, but it's not super shiny by any means. But anyway, it makes an awesome interior. Uh, the book, that I was showing you first here. This is actually the same leather. It's a darker color. It's a it's a rich brown, red, almost like a cherry, uh, um, cherry brown, I guess. Um, anyway, it makes an awesome, awesome interior. I'm going to make a couple of wallets with it too, uh, just so that I can show it off. We're going to be selling that leather by the square foot. Um, great alternative to English bridal because it's way cheaper, but yet it's also a finished leather. So we're looking at like $4 and 50 cents a square foot versus English bridal is 12 95 a square foot. So, um, there's the new leather. All right. So back to this book cover. Um, as with, I'm going to go ahead and angle the camera down cause we're going to start building this thing. Um, so yeah. 
All right. Um, all my coffee cups went home to get washed, so I'm using one of my old custom leather ones. Uh -huh. All right. So, like all the other templates that we've made, <clears throat> you can put uh, put your template directly on your leather, and you use a scalpel and cut it out. Um, I will say this: this leather is a little bit thinner. This is a piece of English bridle. It's uh, four to five ounce. Um, so I'm actually I'm going to line it because I do need it to be up to the, that seven ounce mark um, because I want it to be a heavy duty book cover. Um, not necessary to line it if you're using the the seven ounce leather. Um, not really even necessary to line it at the at the six ounce. But I'll show you an, an ugly um, part of what's going on with this leather uh, in just a second. I, I split this piece down from a, a piece of ten ounce and. Um, when I get English bridle, I have the, the tannery, I have them refinish the backs. So the back is all nice and smooth and it's it's got a nice color to it, stuff like that. Well, when you split it, it splits that off. So the inside, the back side of this leather is actually quite unattractive because you can see where some of the black dye has gone through, some of it is not. And so I will show you in just a second. Now, so like I said, there's the bottom side of this leather. See all these spots and stuff? That's where dye has gone completely through. So I've just got some English bridal tan, and I'm going to line it. And that black over this tan is just going to make the absolute prettiest book cover ever. Um, kind of makes me sad that I was already using this bullhide one here, because I'm probably going to want to switch over and start using this one. Um, or maybe it'll be the display on the shelf over there. I, I hadn't decided yet. We'll see how it turns out. So, um, I have cut out that one piece. That's the back. I now, I'm going to go ahead and show you all my process for lining this. Um, it's pretty simple and straightforward, but I, I get a lot of comments where people say that they like that I show the entire project when I make a video. Um, so what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to cut out a piece of this that's a little bit larger than my finished piece. Also keeping in mind there's a, let's talk about this right quick. Okay, there's a clamp mark right here. That's from the tannery. That's the little clamps that they use to hang the leather to dry. Okay, now I'm going to use this leather as a liner. All right, now where that clamp would be, if I used that little area of leather, that clamp would be under one of the the pockets here on this project okay so yes i am going to use that extra little inch of leather that you know some people would cut off and throw away because no one will ever 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 see that clamp mark because it's going to be behind that so it's just a little tidbit you know if you're using leather you're trying to be really sparing i mean i know um you know i, I try to use every square inch i can it all costs money and it's very expensive leather so um, all I'm going to do is just square off that corner right or that edge right there and then I'll use where that clamp is because again it'll be hidden anyway so who gives a dang. And again I'm just cutting this, this liner slightly oversized so that when I glue it I know that all the edges are going to be covered. If I tried to cut it the exact same size, granted, I may not have as much waste, but I also could totally screw up my project. And I'd rather have 15 cents of waste than a screwed up project. Just my personal opinion on that. All right, need my glue. Contact cement, and I need a piece of paper to do my glue it on. It's been a couple of weeks since I made a video, so I really apologize for how unprepared I was this morning. I, uh, I made coffee. I didn't even light a pipe. And uh, so that just tells me I'm all kinds of unprepared. All right, so I'm going to get the glue out, and I'm just going to spread it all over the place. I'm going to save me a little time. I'm just going to pour it. A little more. 
Saves me a lot of back and time, back and forth time with the brush. And I will spread it out. I'm using contact cement and I'm spreading it all over the entire thing because when I fold the book closed, I don't want it to have giant bubbles in it. It will have wrinkles because you are taking a, a, a piece of leather and, you know, making it fold. So it will have wrinkles in that area, but I don't want like the giant bubbles pulling away. Um, I am going to make sure that I get the glue all the way up to all the edges because that's going to ensure that I have a nice finished burnished edge when this is all said and done. whole paper moved. Almost had enough for the whole thing. Alright, so there's that piece. Now I'll do it to the back piece. When using contact cement, you have to use it on both pieces. Otherwise, it won't have a, a, a permanent bond to it. That's not good. Probably going to contaminate my bottle here, but I do not need all that glue. Alright, now that I'm making a mess, let me get my glue jar out of the way so you can see me here. really overexcited there when I poured all that glue. Try to get it all the way to the edge. I don't really want to go over the edge because I don't want this glue to end up on the outside of the leather. Now if it is, I'll warn you this, don't try to rub it off wet. Wait until it sets up and dries and then you can just kind of roll it off with your finger. If you try to do it wet, you're just going to smear it and get a big mess. I'm going to turn this around on the paper so that I can get the other end of it there. There's still entirely too much glue on this project, so I've got to spend some extra time doing some spreading here. how we just talked about waste and here I am wasting all right I'm feeling pretty confident about the level of glue that off there and we have to wait a few minutes for that glue to set up um, it doesn't take way too long um, depending on the brand of glue, it can take longer with some than others. Uh, this is our brand, the Maker's uh, Contact Cement, and um, this will be ready here in just a few minutes. But I'm going to set it aside, and we're going to go ahead and cut out our other couple of pieces out of the two to three ounce so that we can conserve time. Like I said, I know people enjoy that I don't, that I show the entire project when making a video. But I know that also people don't like hearing me talk for hours on end. Janie Sue has let me know that a couple of times. <laughs> All right, where did the other pieces of my template go? All right, so the uh, inside flap we need to cut two, and then the card pocket we need to cut one. If you wanted to cut two, I guess you could put cards in the back and the front, but. Mine only has them in the front.
Um, I've had a lot of people on almost every video ask about my scalpel handle. Um, this is one of our standard scalpel handles that we sell at Maker's Leather Supply. But what I did is I took wood and epoxied to the sides of it. See the scalpel handle right there in the middle? Epoxy to the sides of it, and then I just sanded it on a, uh, a belt sander until it was kind of the shape I wanted, and then I kept sanding it until it was nice and smooth with a uh, finer grit sandpaper, and then polished it up a little bit, and there you go. It's a custom scalpel handle. Um, I have a lot of people asking if I sell these, and man, if I had time to make them, I would, but there are people that will make them for you out there, so if you don't have the, the sanding equipment and stuff like that, uh, I thought about making up 10 or 15 out of some of the scrap wood I have in the back and then just offering them when I can offer them type thing, but it's all time dependent. We've spent a lot of time the last couple of weeks building this new website and I mean extra time is just not something we have had. Alright, so I cut out the one card pocket. Now I'm going to cut out the... Uh, the flaps. Uh, since I know that that was a straight line that I cut, I'm just going ahead and button that flap right up to it. Get glue on this. Um, and that way I can keep on going. Cut this one first. That way I still have a straight line to cut the next one up against. Not go straight, so let me go to the other side here. There we go. I try really hard not to move my template at all. Um, if you have to, I try to rotate the, the leather and the template together. I'll put my knife like at the bottom of it there and slide it around, but still, you're risking moving the template. So I try to adjust my body to whatever angle I need, which sometimes can get pretty funny looking, um, to get these things cut out. All right, so there's one of the two inside flaps. And here's going to be the other one. And again, like right here, I've got this little light-colored spot in my leather. Um, hardly noticeable at all, but I'm still, if I, if I remember and think about it in a little bit, I will make sure and try to put that on the uh, behind the card pocket part of the uh, the the finished product there. All right, these pieces are now cut out. I'm gonna set them aside right quick. Let me just get this book out of the way. There's no reason for it to still be here. And I'm gonna go ahead and finish gluing up my little liner here. Okay, and see, I got some glue on the outside of that. Again, once that's good and dry, I'll just kind of roll it off gently. And it should, should come off. Put the liner down first. Carefully place this to make sure it's gonna be completely uh, covered. Um, the one thing that sucks about good contact cement is it's permanent. So while that's exactly what it's supposed to be, it means that sometimes you're not gonna get a, chance, a second chance to move that. All right, yes, the glue is just rolling right off of that, thank goodness. All right, now I'm going to get out my handy-dandy roller tool, and I'm going to 
make sure that that's rolled on there really, really well. Get any of my excess glue off my mat here. I got pretty sloppy this morning. All right, handy dandy roller tool. confident in how well that got rolled. Okay, so we're going to set that aside. Um, I, I will trim off that edge right there, but we'll set it aside for now. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to construct where the card pockets will be. All right. Um, so the card pocket's going to go on that, like that right there. First thing we need to do, though, is well, I want to I want to burnish that little edge right there because once it's glued on or once it's it's on there we're not going to be able to burnish it okay um, and then while I'm at it I'm going to go ahead and also burnish the inside edge of this and the inside edge of this and then they'll be done so grab me a this is a Montana edger number one it might be a little small but we'll We'll see. Um, yeah, it's working fine. It's a Montana Edger number one by Ron's Tools. Um, works really well on this two ounce um, English bridle at getting a getting that uh, corner rounded there. Do both sides. Okay. All right, now on these, I only need to burnish the one edge that'll be on the inside of the book um, right here because the other three edges will be burnished with the rest of the book. So again, I'm going to pay attention to those little light spots so that they'll be underneath this. And so I'll burnish this side. As you can tell, my tool's not taking much off of this, just a little bitty, bitty bit. I am going to hand sew this project. Um, again, I'm, in all my videos, I hand sew because I don't want people to think that they have to own a sewing machine to do any of the patterns of projects that I do. Um, it is nice. It is a great time saver. I sell sewing machines, so it's kind of a conflict of interest, but it's still something that should be proven that, yeah, hand stitching takes longer and it sucks a little, but it can be done. And honestly, I love hand stitching. I really enjoy it. Um, the problem is usually just that I don't have all the time in the world to do it. Okay. A little burnish going on here. My Ron's edge rub. And I bet I don't have a piece of canvas left. Oh, there it is. Okay, a little piece of canvas. And I'm just going to, I'm not even worrying about dyeing this, uh, these edges. Because, honestly, if I did dye them, I'd want to dye them black. And the black is a very powerful dye. And I worry that it would seep in a little bit on the, the leather. And then it wouldn't be a nice, pretty, even line. So I would rather just leave it undyed and burnish it up nicely. And then I don't have to worry about ruining the pieces with black dye. Black dye is the devil. Um... I see people constantly, hey, what brands do you use? Because I used X brand and I don't like it at all or, you know, whatever on black dyes. And my answer is I just hate doing anything black. I, I don't enjoy it. I don't even think black is a pretty color for leather. Um, I say that as I'm sitting here making a black book. Um, I, uh, I recently made the Minimalist wallet these same colors, black with a tan interior. And I mean... It turned out so nice and pretty. I mean, look at those two colors together. It's kind of hard in the light, but there you go. Look at those two colors together. It really is pretty. 
Um, when I say that I hate black, one of the things I hate about black is when you spend all this time tooling something up for somebody, a customer, a friend, or whatever, and then they want it black. It's like, awesome. I am really glad that I could take my six hours of tooling and just hide them in that bleak, dark color. Takes away all the finer details, makes it where you just can't see it as well. Um, that's part of the reason I hate black. Other than that, black dye is the devil. Thank you for mentioning that. All right, got a nice burnish on two of the three pieces here. Now for the third. Those pieces are burnished. Now, this part's going to be a little tricky. Like I said, the um, this one where the spots are, um, there are very, very low tolerances here as far as um, the amount of room between these lines. Okay, and it's just it's unfortunately it's the size of the book. It's too big for two cards and almost too small for three cards. So yeah. Um, I'm going to grab this little template here and a stylus, and we're going to mark these stitch lines. And then we're going to glue the two pieces together and do all of our stitching. So what I'm going to do is I've got my template just barely down a little bit from that, and I'm just going to mark a little dot where that stitch line is. Okay, and then I'm going to move it up to where you can see the back of the leather back here. See it back there? And I'm going to do the exact same thing and mark a little dot where that stitch line is. And then I'll take a straight edge and I'll, I'll connect the dots with a little line so that we can see it. All right, so there's my two dots. I'll just flip this thing around right quick and... Grab a little line. Now this two ounce leather, um, I'm not too concerned with drawing or uh, with uh, cutting a stitch groove in it because it's two ounce leather. Um, it's really thin and that would take it down to one ounce leather plus it would take the structural integrity of the, the grain side of the leather away from it. And then you look at if you pull a stitch too tight, you're probably going to perforate the leather. All right. So now, what we are going to do is glue these two pieces together, all right? Now, I don't glue under the stitch lines because once, one, one more time, that's a very, very tight tolerance, and if I accidentally get too much glue in there, then you're gonna have a hard time getting a card in and uh, breaking, that, breaking that glue line without stretching your leather and making it look like crap. So I'm just very, very, very lightly gonna run, run the tiniest little bead of glue around the edges on both sides here okay so just around those three edges <clears throat> now what i'm going to do here i've got this lined up in the back back here all right and i'm going to take my fingernail and just mark a tiny little mark where the top of that is so i know where to stop my glue line there's nothing worse than going too far with your glue line and then you got glue showing on your finished project here's my glue and i need another piece of paper I get a message at five in the morning, but it happens. 
All right, so I'm gonna dab most of the glue off this brush, and I am. I'm going to run just the slightest little line as close to that edge as I can get it. I'll hold this up so that you can see the glue glistening in the uh, light so that you can see how slight of a line it is. And again, there's my little fingernail mark. I'm only going to go to it with my glue. All right. So you can see the shine and the light of how thin that's less than an eighth of an inch of glue all the way around. I just need it to hold so I can sew it. And then I need it to hold past that a little bit because I, I want a nice finished edge. And the glue is going to help with that. One thing that stinks about only trying to get a tiny bit of glue on your project is then sometimes you don't get any. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start in a corner and make sure that these pieces are perfectly lined up and lightly press them together in case I do need to move them. All right, press all my edges together here. keep all the glue off this mat that I can because it'll show up in the unexpected places if I know. All right. I got out my big rubber pad here so that I can use my uh, my pricking irons and I'm going to go ahead and sew through all that. Um, I'm going to use eight stitches per inch. Uh, it's my favorite size for small projects. Um, this project is about the biggest one I would use eight stitches per inch on. I'd probably move down to a seven um, if I was going to go any bigger than this. So what I'm going to do though is when I do one, uh, when I, I do a project where one piece of leather ends on another piece here, I do one stitch past the end of it. I just think it has a really cool custom look to it. No sewing machine usually can can accomplish that. So it also is kind of a mark of hand stitching in my eyes. I'm sure people would argue that, and that's fine. And then I'm going to stop it about a quarter of an inch from the back end. I can't you can't see that quarter of an inch or so from the back end here because the, sti the, the stitch line doesn't have to go all the way to its matching stitch line, you know, around the outside of the book. But if it goes past that stitch line, then it's going to look ugly. So I'd rather stop it a little bit short um, than, than to go too far. Sorry, I really should do this at more of an angle so maybe you could see better. One day, Janie Sue will get to work here with us, and uh, I'll have my camera crew all the time. <laughs> all right, so I'm making sure that I'm doing the same amount of stitches on both so that it looks even. And there we go. Put the stitch and prick and iron away for a minute. Um, I'm going to grab my little portable stitching 
pony and um, I'm going to sew these up. I'm going to use 0.8 millimeter thread. This is like three, maybe four ounces of leather total. And normally I would say 0.8 millimeter is a little bit too thick for it. But the problem is the rest of the book is going to be somewhere around eight ounces total. And I want all the thread to match. So I'm still going to use it, even though if this was the only thing I was sewing, I would probably try to find me a thinner thread. Here's my little pony. I like the finish side on the right because that's I'm right-handed and that's you're supposed to do your finish side first. Um, what I'm going to do is, uh, I know I've showed a lot of stitching in other videos, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video so this doesn't become ridiculously long while I stitch this up. When we come back, this line and the next line will both be stitched up. All right, so I, uh, I sewed these two lines, and then I left the, uh, the stitching, I, I left the thread on it uh, here because I wanted to show you all a little trick. I've shown this in a couple of the other videos, but um, some people have a hard time clipping that uh, down, you know, tight with the leather. Well, a little trick I learned uh, from a video on uh, braiding and knotting is take your scalpel and just put it right up against there. Don't apply pressure to the scalpel. Instead... Run your thread back and forth against the blade, and when it cuts, it's nice and flush. You don't even usually have to burn it off. I mean, it's it's right up on the line. So it's, it's an easy way to do that without damaging the leather or any of the other stitches. So anyway. All right, so this piece is complete as far as that sew line and everything, or those sew lines. Um, I would put a card in them and test them out, but unfortunately with the edges just being glued, I don't want to bust that glue. So, uh, the next thing we are going to do, I don't know why I just put that back down there. I'm about to use it again. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do, roll some more of that glue off, is I'm going to cut out the, cut the liner off of this piece right here. So, and then I'm going to put the, uh, sleeves on it and sew the entire thing. A um, couple of things I'll do to prep that though. I'm going to run a stitch groover around this piece and I want to do that before I put the sleeves on it because I want it to lay completely flat on the on the the, um, the table. If I put the sleeves on it then it'll have a little ridge there where it's thicker under the sleeves and um, the stitch groover won't run perfectly straight along it. Couple blades getting dull. All right. Um, so again, I'm going to take my stitch groover and I'm just going to run along. Um, Probably a little bit further in than an eighth of an inch, but not quite a quarter, so what would that be, um, three sixteenths? For the mathematicians out there, I am not one of them. Yeah, that would do. Alright, and I'm not going to cut this groove too deep, because again, just like that back side of this, if I cut too deep, I'll get into leather that's not dyed, and then um, 
you know, uh, I risk that being shown in the finished product. There we go. That's a good depth. I still see black, even though it's a little bit lighter color. Um, this is one of our uh, Stitch Groovers by Barry King. Um, I, I really love this Stitch Groover. It is really, really nice. Uh, the last video I did, I couldn't find the dang thing. Um, somebody had moved it, and it was under a pile on a different table. Anybody that's been in the shop knows that it is it is a store, but it's also a shop. And, um, you know, we've got a lot of stuff um when we're doing things like mystery boxes and stuff like that, there can be stuff on every flat surface around here as we try to organize and get stuff out. All right. So I stitch grooved all the way around that. Now what I'm going to do is flip it back over and I'm going to end up gluing these in place. All right, once again, I've got to pay attention. Not this one, you don't have to worry about, but on this one, which side did you burnish if you didn't dye it, you know? Um, so the burnish side needs to go on the on the inside. And the reason I say if you didn't dye it, if you did dye it, then it's very easy to see which one you burnished. Um, so it'll glue up just like this. And then um, this book that is currently my coaster will slide under this one like this, and it's going to be beautiful. So, hopefully I can get this daggum thing hand-sewn and finish up this video before... I'll tell you what I am going to do, though. There's this one black spot right here on my leather. I don't really know what caused that. It doesn't seem to be coming off. Um, but anyway, I'm going to turn it around because if it's on the... Where it is... Oops, sorry. If it's on uh, that side right there, then when this book is in here the book will actually cover it up so won't be seen beautiful all right so once again i'm going to put these up here line them up on all my all my edges make sure they're good and straight and perfect and i'm going to take my fingernail and i'm going to mark where i'm going to stop putting glue okay so there i have a little bitty notch and a little bitty notch these are so close to the edge that when i burnish that edge that mark will go away All right, and there's a little bit more tolerance for a glue line on these pieces. Um, I could do probably all the way up to a quarter of an inch without worrying that I'm going to cover um, like where the book needs to be inside this project. So pull the chair over here, get my glue back out, clean off some of the mess I've caused. All right. And again, I'm going to pay attention to where my little fingernail marks are as I go around here with the glue brush. You can, if whatever leather you're using isn't adhering very well with the glue, it could be because as a finished leather, it's just, there's nothing for the glue to stick to. You know, it's nice and smooth and nice. All the qualities that you love about it are also what make it to where it doesn't glue. Um, if you have that issue, then you can take a little bit of sandpaper and just kind of rough up that sm that little area, and then that'll fix it. All right, so that piece is done. Set it to the side there. 
and I'll do the three sides, only three sides of this piece. Side with the burnished edge, you're not going to glue. Oop, had a drip. Okay, once again, paying attention to here's the burner side. I do not want to glue it. So I'll glue the other sides. All right, so we're going to stick this together. And again, I'm going to make sure that my, because um, I'm, I'm, of that little black speck there, I'm going to make sure this is the back of the book. And then, see, remember that stitch clamp, that, or that uh, clamp that we talked about earlier, the clamp mark. Here it is under here. It's never going to be seen. It is nice and hidden. And we saved us an inch of leather. Due to the saved money on that inch of leather, I may have bacon on my cheeseburger today. Who knows? <laughs> Ah, right. to make sure that lays nice and flat. And the other side. So there she be. Um, I am now going to take my pricking irons and go all the way around and I'm going to hand sew this thing together and when I come back we'll talk about uh, edging and finishing and burnishing and stuff. So yeah. Um, I will say this, when you're doing any kind of a project that's a high wear item, a wallet, a notebook, things like that. Matter of fact, let's just say when you're doing any project at all, I never start my stitch when I'm stitching it in the actual corner. Especially if I'm going to go all the way around it or something. Um, I don't start in the corner because that's a high wear area. So I'll start my stitch an inch or two from the, the, the corner. I also don't start it in the, like the middle because that's... That's kind of high, uh, high visibility area, and you know where you stop and start your stitch. It might be a tiny bit more bulky right there. Real small detail, but it's it's an important one. Um, if you're trying to make the best item that you can, um, I start my stitch, you know, somewhere around an inch or two from the corner, and make sure it's not directly in the center because it's it's eye catching if it's directly in the center. Um, and uh, yeah, and it kind of hides i guess you could say that the start and stop of that stitch i mean it's not an unsightly thing but you can see where it is um anyway okay i'm going to pause the video i'm going to hand sew this and uh hopefully i'll get to come back and finish this video before the shop opens this morning all right so all the stitching is complete on uh on the book here um, went all the way around. I did splice it. Um, my, my, my starting of my stitch was right here. Um, 
went all the way around to here and I spliced it right here and then continued going around. Anyway, but uh, there's the inside. Here's the outside. When I was done uh, with all the stitching, I went ahead and went outside and um, sanded all these edges nice and flat and got rid of any of the glue and stuff that had protruded through. Um, I'll bring this up a little bit because every time I pick something up, you don't see it. Okay. So I, uh, I went through and uh, smoothed all the, or um, sanded all the edges nice and smooth, got rid of the glue and stuff. Now it is time to run an edger around this. And uh, then we're gonna dye and burnish the edges. So. Got my uh, Ron's Tools round edger number two and number three. Um, I'm thinking I'll probably use a three on the whole thing and just go really easy on it right here in the middle where it's the thinnest. Um, oh, but one more thing I wanted to do first. Uh, this is a corner punch. It's a craft tool. Got it at Tandy a couple of years ago. Um, it just is going to round those square corners just a tiny bit. I'm not using the entire punch. I'm just basically using just the, the uh, very center of it there. Um, just, just the tip, just to see how it feels. And uh, yeah, so barely rounding that corner, just the tiny bit. I, I like this little punch. It, it is a, a good punch, but the problem with it sometimes is that you'll start out, you know, an eighth of an inch in, by the time you get to the bottom, it's scooted all the way out. And so you just gotta really pay attention to, to holding it nice and straight and uh, getting a good bite on your leather as you go down. There we go. All right, last one. There we go. All right, so the corners are just very, very slightly rounded just because I don't like sharp corners. Um, and yeah. Uh, again, I'm going to grab my number three uh, round edger from, from Ron's Tools. Edge the sucker up real quick. I am. I'm going to slow down when I get to the center part where it's a little thinner to make sure I can control the depth of my cut. Um, because when using a larger edger on a smaller area, you basically could just cut all the way across the leather, unfortunately. So you just got to be careful. People ask me all the time, you know, with the, the Ron's edgers, um, you know, if you could only buy one, which one would you get? And uh, my answer is definitely the number two or the number three for uh, just all purpose general, you know, belts and personal items and stuff like that. Very rarely do I use the, uh, the larger sizes. I do use the smaller sizes. And of course, um, like earlier, we use the... Uh, the Montana Edger, which is designed for the really thin leathers. But I do love these tools. That's why I heavily endorse them and sell them on our site too. to dye these edges. I'm going to go ahead and dye them black and uh, then I'm going to burnish them and this book will be complete. Um, since this book is made entirely of English bridal, it's going to burnish really easily and well. Um, if I were using uh, leather that maybe was uh, chrome tan or something, um, then it might be a little bit more difficult to, to burnish. Um, the interior leather that we put in the uh, Mystery box does burnish okay. Um, it doesn't burnish as well as veg tan, but it, it does pretty well. So, yeah. 
All right, so I'm gonna get, uh, this is just Angelus black dye. Um, and I'm just gonna run a, a bead of it around the edge here and hope that it doesn't bleed in too much on the, uh, the interior where it's a lighter color. So. Sorry, I'm off camera here. I should sit back down. And it really does finish it off once the edges get finished. It, it, um, it really kind of ties it all together and makes it a really nice project. I don't even, when I'm doing this, like I said, I worry about the dye bleeding on the inside of it. I don't even look at the inside until I'm completely done because I don't want to hold back. I don't want to do anything different. I don't want to change anything. And if it bleeds in, it bleeds in, and I'll figure it out later. But I'll worry about it too much if I'm watching the inside. And actually, it did really, really well. As a matter of fact, I had the exact opposite problem. I didn't quite get the coverage I should right there. So I'm going to risk it all here. The straighter you can get that dye line, then the better it'll look once it's burnished. It's really hard not to sing along with this song. I like this song. <laughs> both my daughters came in just a second ago, and they're both looking at me like, yes, yes, it's very hard. All right, so we'll use our uh, Ron's Edge Rub again and a piece of canvas, and we're going to burnish this up right quick, and then we'll fold it in half and leave it under something heavy for a day, and then it'll be a beautiful book cover tomorrow. Or I may just throw it in my computer bag because that'll keep it nice and compressed too. So with this Ron's Edge Rub, I put it on only one side at a time. Um, if I try to put it on more than one side at a time, then it will not be as effective because it kind of, I don't know, dries out or sets or what the right correct term is. But either way, makes it to where it's not as effective. There we go. Just the burnish we need. It looks like one piece of leather instead of two or three stuck together. Actually, I guess this is four layers in some areas because of the liner. This Ron's edge rub can kind of separate some and just need to mix it up a little bit. It's been a few days since I've used it, so. Got a little bit too much of it on there, so I'm gonna dab off a little bit. Then one of the other things when you're doing a big book cover like this, one of the easiest ways to manage it while you burnish it is to put it down on the edge of your table like this. And rub on it. You can usually get more pressure on it and uh, get a good burnish out of it.
All right, last edge. And then I'll show you what I do with the card pockets once I'm uh, done. Let me see if there's a cleaner part of this canvas to use here. All right. Um, now, the very last thing I do on a project like this when it has card pockets is I will go in there with like a, a ruler or something like that, and I will open those card pockets up and stretch them out a little bit. Like I said um, numerous times on this video, I know this one has some really tight tolerances, so this will help um, quite a bit. So I just run the ruler in there, and I get it all the way up to that stitch line, and I uh, really press against that stitch line and, and stretch that out a little bit. And then down there where the glue line is, I want to open it up all the way to the stitches. Like that. And now it won't be difficult to, uh, to run a card in there and, uh, and it kind of forms it. So I'll do that with, uh, with all three of these pockets here. And, uh, then, like I said, that's it. Um, after that, I'm going to close the book, and uh, I'll put the book inside of it and close it. And I'll put it inside my bag or uh, under under something really heavy or something for a day and let it form to itself. And um, then it'll be ready to use. So I appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, as always, you can leave them in the comments, and I'm more than happy to answer them. Um, our, uh, our website, again, is makersleathersupply.com. For anybody that doesn't know, if you're looking for materials to make things like this, and uh, again, I'm Aaron Heiser of Makers Leather Supply, and we appreciate you making it with makers. Have a good day.